accordions are a pretty common type of component that we find on lots of websites these days, but they're often a little bit lacking, either with sort of clunky animations or no animations at all, and the design of them is often kind of uninspired and boring and sometimes they can just be downright ugly. Well, my friend and friends, I recently came across this code pen by Zdash that just looked awesome, and I thought it would be the perfect starting off point for creating an accordion that's responsive and, well, good looking to add a little bit of delight to our user experience on our projects that we're working on. So here is, you know, Zed's what he created, and I think it looks really nice, as I said. Uh, but as we can see with one of the side things, you know, it's an experiment or something he did to play around with a bit, so, it's responsive in the sense that it works at different screen sizes, but we're hiding content, which we don't want to do. So we're going to look at how we can make this actually be responsive and be, you know, different orientations and everything. Uh, but for however we're doing it or the different orientations and everything we're going to do, we're going to rely on this of using the flex grow when something's active and we're telling, you know, the panel it's allowed to grow and you can see it fills up the space. And that's really a nice trick and sort of the, the crux of what we're going to be building upon here to make it work. Now we can finally get into our HTML and CSS and all of that fun stuff. So you'll see here, I'm just in a regular HTML file. You can definitely build this with your framework of choice, whether it's something like React or Svelte or uh, Vue or Angular or whatever, and make this into a bit more of a component with panels and stuff. But we're gonna do it the, the classic way here. Um, just so anybody can sort of use it how they want to. But we just have our basic template set up here and I have a link to my CSS file and the script tag here as well because we will be having to use a little bit of JavaScript for this one as well. Uh, and if we go and look on the side here, the only other thing I really have that's important is I have some images that I'll be using uh, for the anchor, the boat, the fishing and all of that. And I also have an SVG for all of my icons. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the icons when we get around to it, but I have used a site to create a single sprite SVG um, instead of having separate ones. Either way, it wouldn't really make a big difference uh, in the long term, but we'll see sort of why this sprite is good and how I created it in a little bit. But yeah, that's sort of what we're starting with. Uh, the images, obviously, I just found on my own. And when we come to start writing the HTML here, it's very easy just to dive in and make a total mess of things. So uh, especially for interactive components, like we're going to be building here, where people might be interacting with it in different ways. And that's because some people are gonna be using their mouse, some people will be using touch devices, other people will be using keyboard navigations, and other people will be using assistive technologies to visit our pages. So how do we make sure when something is interactive that they're actually getting the right user experience and they're able to interact with it and get all the information they need and it works? Well, you open up Google like any good developer would do. And in here, we can just do A11Y, which is short for accessibility. And I'm also gonna add in here accordion because that's what we're going to be building. Right there, we can grab one. And I'm gonna be going to this one here, though I'm sure all of these other ones have decent patterns that are set up. But the w3.org, uh, it is the Area Authoring Practices Guide, which goes through on the proper way to set things up, which makes it work especially for keyboard navigation as well as through screen readers and assistive technologies. So uh, I'm not gonna deep dive all of this. I'm just gonna say that this was sort of my base for how I built things out and why it's important is we talk here about the keyboard interactions that need to be happening. So we need to be able to tab on and shift tab to go backwards and use either a space bar or enter to open and close our tabs. So that is an important part of it. Uh, and it does go more information here as far as heading levels that are required in them, things like area expanded, having a region. We're gonna talk more about these here, but the nice thing with this is it gives us a good starting point to build from. And the reason we wanna do that is because when we're writing our HTML, if we don't follow that from the beginning, we build in a lot of technical debt into what we're creating because we might have to do a lot of changes to make it accessible later on. Whereas if you do it right from the beginning, <laughs> just you do it right from the beginning, maybe you spend an extra 15 minutes just figuring it out and getting it working, but that's a lot better than spending three, six, eight plus hours after the fact trying to refactor something completely because it wasn't done properly in the first place. So try not to build any technical debt and just do things right from the beginning. Now, nothing to do with accessibility, but we're gonna start things off and I'm just gonna put a wrapper here, uh, which is just gonna hold everything in the middle of my page for me. This would not be something related to the accordion. I just don't want it to stretch the entire width of my page. And we can come in with the accordion itself. So I'm just gonna do an accordion class like that, uh, which is the entire element. I'm not using a section or an article or anything like that. I think just a div for something like this is fine. Of course, we could have a main uh, and wrap everything in a main, but 
um, you know, we're just sort of focused on a single component right now. So we're just going to focus primarily on what we have here. And inside the accordion, we need to have our accordion panels. And each accordion panel sort of has two parts to it. We have the part that we can see from the beginning and then the part that expands out from that. Uh, if you're wondering if you can use details, because you know we have the, the details element, which is sort of like this native drop downy type element inside of HTML and CSS, or HTML, I should say. Uh, the first thing with it is you can't really animate it, um, but it's also not really great for an accordion. I can add a link down below. Um, details is very specific basically on what you should use it for, and it doesn't do very good for most other things. Um, but here we have our accordion. As I said, we'll have a accordion panel. Now we are going to have many panels, but we'll just build one out and then we can just replicate that because if you were using, um, you know, building this as an actual component within a JavaScript framework or something, we just have to build one anyway. Um, so we'll have our accordion panel like that. And then, as I mentioned, inside there, we're going to have a couple of things. We're going to have a heading as well as our content itself. So for now, let's just do an H2 plus a div. So there's my heading at the top and there's the div that will be underneath it. And you might be wondering, well, what about, you know, we have to be able to click, there's some interaction going on, shouldn't we have a button? Interestingly, and this is following the area authoring guides that we were just looking at, and this is why I like following those, so I build things out properly from the beginning, is the button should actually go inside the H2 here, which is allowed. So my first one here, the, the text inside of there is going to be boating. Um, so I'm going to throw that in there. And then here inside this div, I think we should give this a class so we can style it up a little bit. So I'm going to do class is equal to accordion content. And we are going to be using JavaScript for this. So I'm going to do an ID on here. My IDs aren't going to be exactly the same. So I'm just going to do panel one uh, content here. Just so we can, you know, we're going to panel one, panel two, panel three. So I'm just numbering it like that and putting content at the end here. And the reason I'm putting content is because we're going to have a span wrapping around this. So here I'm going to put my span and we can bring boating inside of that. And on the span itself, we can have the ID and it's going to be panel one title. And you might be wondering why I'm putting this in a span. We're already inside the H2. And, and that's just because I want to sort of treat this as its own thing, because there's going to be something else in here, which is the icon. So we're going to come back to the icons, as I said later, but we can just drop the SVG in here. And I don't know why, but the Emmet doesn't like doing SVG. Uh, inside of VS Code. So I'm going to put the SVG here and we'll give that a class as well. And I'm going to do that one as a core accordion icon. And I have noticed some people when I'm not using BEM um, say something. So of course you could 100% use BEM for this. There's no reason not to be using it. Just I'm just naming it like this because that's how I did it for this one. And I still do use BEM or, or my own variation of it. But uh, you know, we, for something like this, we don't really need, and because it's not part of a bigger project, I'm just going with sort of general class names here. And now this icon's not really going to be useful when it comes to assistive technologies. Um, you know, a screen reader doesn't really need to see it or know it's there, and I don't want to worry about it trying to do something with it. So I'm also going to add an area hidden is equal to true here, just because it's really for sighted users. Um, so we can hide it from things like screen readers just with that right there. And so we have our boating um, as our actual title on that. Now let's cycle back up to this button because this button is a very specific thing and it's actually going to be doing a lot of different stuff. We're going to need a few different attributes on here. So the first one I'm going to do is give this a class and I'm going to call it accordion trigger because it's triggering my panels. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do here, and let's just tab these over so it still looks nested. Uh, we're going to have an area controls because whenever you have a button, when you click that button and it's doing something, we should have an area controls to say what it's controlling. And in this case, we already have an ID down here of our panel content one. So I can throw that on there. So our button is our accordion trigger that's controlling our panel content one, and it's going to be able to make that expand and, and, and contract, shrink, I guess. Um, and the last thing we're going to do on here is an area expanded and expanded. And the reason you do an area expanded is to say whether or not that panel is actually open. Is panel content one expanded or visible or is it not visible? And so we're going to say that this is true because when we start this off, I'm always going to have one panel open with how I'm creating this uh, just because it's going to help with things like page, you know, I don't want content to jump when we're opening it and stuff. So we're going to set this up. So there's always only one panel open. And at the beginning, the first one will be the one that's open. Uh, and the nice thing with this is we're going to sort of lean into that semantic CSS thing that I've talked about previously, where we're actually going to be using this to do some of our styling. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on when we get to the actual interaction side of things. Now for this part right here, we have a lot going on. We're going to have one more thing, which is actually going to be an ID on the H2 here. 
And uh, here we did panel one content. So as you might guess up here, I'm going to do a panel one heading. Uh, just really quickly, I put an H2 here, even though I don't have an H1 anywhere on my page. Ideally, you would have an H1. The heading level of this should be something that makes sense within your page. So I did H2 just because H1 wouldn't make sense. We're going to have multiple of them. Um, but also, I'm assuming there would be a, a title somewhere else. This would be something later on. It couldn't maybe be an H3, an H4. Uh, I also get comments about, well, it's really hard to know what it's going to be in a specific spot. If you're using something that's like a reusable component that you could be plugging into different areas, you could build in the functionality to have that be changed, right? <laughs> so it would fit with whatever you need. Um, you don't have to hard code the heading level in there. It could definitely be like a prop or something uh, that gets updated depending on the, the, you know, what the information you're giving it. So I'm going with an H2. Just make sure it fits with your document structure. If you're not sure about that card coming up right now or a link in the description about how we can or how we should properly use heading levels to create the document structure. And with that out of the way, the reason that I put this ID of H2 up here is because on the div that we're putting down here, which is going to have the content itself, I'm going to come here and uh, yeah, we can put it. Let's put this on multiple lines, too, because we are going to have a few different things on here. And I'm going to come down here. And we're going to do an area labeled by and it's going to be labeled by the heading that is right here just like that. And so we're just associating this heading to the content that is going to be inside of here. And the other thing that's important with this, and this is something you very rarely do. I've done a lot of adding of uh, area attributes in my content. Uh, and area mostly comes in when you're building interactive things. You shouldn't be having to use area or roles if you're just writing regular HTML and CSS. But when we add interaction, this is often where they come in, which is why you're not going to remember all this. You'll never remember it all. Um, but this is where having something like that site I was showing before, the authoring guides, is really useful. And what we want to do is have a role of a region on here. And this means that when somebody tabs and then they open with the keyboard, we open it up. If we're using something uh, like Narrator or another assistive technology, you can actually push a button. I know on Windows Narrator, once it's opened, if I push D, it goes to the next region. So I'd go from the title to the content that's after it, and it can start reading the related content. Without that, there's no easy way to actually jump to that. So this is really important. And the role region here will not work if we don't have this. So it's really important that we have the area labeled by. So we actually have a title for that area. And then we have the role region here just to make the content in there easy to get to. Now, I just have this random paragraph of uh, filler ipsum stuff right there. So I'm just going to throw that in here. So just some paragraph that's going inside of there. And while we could do this as a background image, I'm also going to grab my image and throw that in here as well and actually have that as, as content that's inside of here. And the reason I'm putting my image here, uh, and I'm just doing it as a, a regular image, but we could even use a picture tag or something. But the main reason I like doing this is we can actually add alt text to my image. Uh, and it's easy enough to make it as, you know pretty much appear like it's a background image. If you'd prefer to just use a background image, you could definitely do that. But having images as content is always useful. And while we're here, we're going to do one more thing actually up here with this div on the accordion content before we get the other panels in place. Uh, and the reason for that is we're, we have a setup. We're going to keep something very similar to this uh, that's going on. And what I want to do, though, is, you know, we're going to have a bit longer for like these paragraph texts in mind, just so if we needed more text, it would work. But when we're not there, like when we're not looking at something, that text isn't actually visible. And so what I'm going to do is ideally when this is closed, this entire area, uh, I'm going to bring it here because it's another area. I'm going to do an area hidden is equal to true. And if you look at the A11Y uh, thing from the W3org that I was looking at earlier, they actually suggest using a hidden equal, uh, just a hidden attribute on here which prevents this whole thing from rendering. Normally, I'd go with that, no problem. But the problem is we're using this image. And because I'm using that image uh, and I want the image to be visible for sighted users, um, we're going to keep that there. It, it's sort of a, a little visual because it's a little teaser hint that the title is giving to the non, right, this voting. It gives us the information. This is just a little bit more. So I'm just going to use an area hidden of true. Uh, so this only comes in after. 
because again, the image wouldn't load in. Uh, we could also maybe use the hidden on the paragraph instead, but I think this is sort of a nice compromise. Um, so yeah, we put that there. Uh, but in this case, actually, I'm just saying that this area hidden will be false. And then all the other panels that we'll have after that, will have the area hidden is true. So when our panel is open, the a screen reader would have access to the image as well as the text that's going to be in there. But when it's closed, it just has the title. Uh, and then they can get that rest of the information afterwards if they open the panel. And with that done, we have our panel and that's going to be the same thing for each one. I'll go through the update in a second once I add all the panels in just because there would be a few little things. But first, let's get our SVG set up. Uh, I realize we haven't looked at anything yet, but there's nothing much to look at at the, at the moment. But um, if you look here, I, I got some icons that I wanted to use for this project. So the icons were all there. Uh, and then I saved them each as an individual SVG file. And what to be able to like use these, I could just use each one as is, but first you'll notice like these are all colored. I didn't want all of that. Um, I wanted sort of to be able to individually style them nice and easily. Uh, but the main thing that I wanted to do is have some sprites. So there's this site, which is SVG sprites, uh, which SP, you know, the ES at the end there. Um, but basically, whoops, we don't want to save that. Uh, we can just take your, any, if you have a group of SVGs, you just grab them, drop them in here. Uh, and it will create sprites for you. And you can see down here, you can copy sprite, download the demo, download the sprite um, and stuff. So I can just copy what it created here and bring that over into VS Code, which is exactly what I did. Uh, I did clean things up a little bit based on what it gave me. So, but basically it's just taking each one of the SVGs here. So I have my anchor here or the first one's my boat. So you can see symbol and it has, I have an ID of boat and everything there. Now, if we look at what it originally had given me, um, if I make this a bit bigger, I had ID two, two on a group. And then I had this anchor here and I had these blank depths and stuff. So I did clean this up a little bit to remove those. I, I did keep these, uh, on there, but I also took them off and I just had it on the symbol to have the ID. So I changed things a little bit. Um, or here you have the idea of anchor on the symbol and then I had anchor here. So I just I cleaned things up um, to get rid of anything I didn't need. It took me two minutes to do it. Um, and I'm left with this where we have the symbols, which are things that we can reuse throughout a project. You'll also see it comes with the class of uh, width zero, height zero, and a class of hidden on here. So I can just copy all of this. Um, and I want to do this. If you, if you were using it just as is, you could definitely use it as is. But I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom after everything else and paste that in. And everything's getting formatted because I am using Prettier. Um, so it just does a little bit of code formatting for me. But uh, if I come all the way back up, it does leave this big mess of SVG at the bottom of your project. But it's not the end of the world. Um, but it makes it really easy to use these wherever I need to use them now because we have the IDs on them. And the nice thing with doing it this way is they're inlined, which makes custom styling and other stuff really easy on them. Uh, because right now there's no fills or anything that's on any of these. So we'll see We'll see how we can do some styling magic with those in a few minutes. So if we go back up to that SVG that we'd originally put in there, uh, where was it? Here it is. Uh, so we had the area hidden on there. We had the true. And inside that SVG, what I want to do is use something called use, just like that. Now this is my boating one, and I have the idea of boating. So I can just use the xlink href of... Uh, the boat like that. So I'm just referencing the ID of boat. And then because it's going to go find the symbol that has that boat ID on it, and it's going to put that in there for me. There is an important thing with this. I am using xlink href, which is technically deprecated, but it just has better browser support um, than the newer way of doing it, which I think it might just be href. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, we can just do it like that and it should work perfectly fine. So saving that, we can go and take a look at what our single panel looks like right now. And it does not look like anything too magical, uh, but we have it there. Look at that. <laughs> uh, the big button, we have the word boating in there. We have my symbol uh, and we have the text that we wanted and we want to make that look a lot prettier. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just add in all the other panels and I'll see you in just a minute. All right. So I brought in all the other panels. So here's the first one, which looks identical to what we'd had. Uh, but, you know, the next one, I updated the IDs on here. The area expanded now is false on the buttons that are not open uh, with the area hidden of true on the div over there. And then I just you know changed my images, changed the SVG link. And other than that, everything is identical. And right now, if we look at it, we get this really 
not very nice looking thing. And now we can start writing some CSS to make that look better. Now you might have noticed it was already in like a dark mode with a dark background and light text. So I did have a little bit of CSS uh, to start with where we have the box sizing set to border box. And I have this HTML color scheme dark, which just forces the dark mode on the site. Um, if you wanted to allow for both, we could do a dark light. Um, on mine, it would stay dark, but on other people's, if their settings are set to light, it would switch to light. Uh, and then I just have a very basic reset here on my body just to set some font styling. The first thing I wanna do is just set up that wrapper that we created at the very beginning, if you remembered. And so on this, we can just throw a max width on here. Uh, I'm also gonna add in the margin inline to auto, which is basically margin left and right. Um, it's a logical property. So if you had a vertical writing mode, that would be top and bottom. And we also wanna add in here, I'll add a little bit of padding. And I also want this to be inline, so I'll just do one rem, and that just means it's smaller screen sizes that um, we won't touch the side. We'll see that in one second. Uh, but the other thing we want to do here is image max width 100%, and we probably don't need it for this, but whenever I do this, I tend to also say display block, uh, just so our images don't overflow. My images were a bit big. I didn't overly optimize uh, for this project, but the, their sizes with the WebP compression were incredibly small. So. Uh, I'm going to open my dev tools really fast here. And just to show you the, the one, like if we're at very small screen sizes, the idea here is that, uh, we get that spacing on the side with the one rem on, on there, um, to make sure it doesn't overflow. Things look a bit funky here, but we're at a really small size. So I'm not too concerned, uh, just yet with the overflow that we're getting. Uh, it's probably caused by these SVGs actually. So we'll get around to fixing all of that. Uh, now let's jump into it and get these panels styled up. The very first thing we can do is let's select our accordion itself, which is the parent of everything else. So accordion, uh, right? If we, let's just jump back here as a quick refresher, because it takes a while to write all that HTML <laughs> as we have the wrapper, then we have the accordion. And then inside the accordion, we have the five individual panels. So I'm going to do a display flex on here, which would get them to go next to one another. But I did mention I want to make this responsive. So for now, we're actually going to do a flex direction of column, which makes everything rows, which makes them stack and sort of go back to what we just had. I also want to make sure we actually have space between these. So I'm going to do a gap of one rem just because if not, it would look a little bit ugly uh, a little bit later on. And so we nothing really looks too different yet. Now we have a few little things we need to fix up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we'll get our accordion panel and we're going to throw a position of position of relative on here, relative. And the main reason I'm doing that is right now our images are way too big. And so let's fix those. That's one of the things causing the big problem right now. So I did give those a class of accordion image. And on that, what we're going to do is a position of absolute. And again, if you did this as background images instead, we wouldn't have to take this step. But again, I like having images actually in there. Uh, so we can have the absolute on there, which sort of starts fixing things. Uh, let's also give them an inset of zero, which is the same as top, bottom, left, right of zero. It's getting there. The next thing I'm going to put on here is an object fit of cover, uh, which is just going to make sure that if the image is getting stretched or pulled or anything weird, um, that it's not going to get too manipulated. Because right now you can see they're actually sort of overlapping one another. Even though we have an inset of zero on here uh, with images, just because of the way they behave and they're replaced elements with other things that would actually sort of control the size of it. But with an image, you still need to put the width and height of 100% on there. So with that, they fit into the areas that they're supposed to be living. If I took off that object that cover, you can see they look terrible. So that's why we want that on there. Uh, so each one's fitting, but the problem is by using position absolute, they go in front of their content. So to be able to fix that, we can use a negative Z index. So Z index negative one, and then they go behind the content that they're in. Uh, this would work fine and not cause any problems most of the time. But we, if you had another background color that was set, like you had a, say the wrapper had a background color, it was inside another section that had a background color, it could, it would actually go behind that. So on the accordion panels themselves, I'm also going to put an isolation of isolate, which creates a new stacking context and just make sure that this negative one can't escape behind the panel itself. Uh, we could put that on the accordion here, but I think we're going to have some pseudo elements at play um, that this will help with as well later on. Now, the next big problem is these these icons that we have there, right? Um, just because they, they don't look too fantastic. 
So that's our SVGs here. And I did give those the class of accordion icon. So we can style those up and make them look a little bit nicer. Now these icons are going to be the beginning of how we can sort of customize this a little bit too, because we're going to get kind of heavy on custom properties on the accordion itself. That's going to give us some controls on like the overall aesthetic of things uh, along the way. But let's set up the very basics of it first. So we can come here and do my accordion icon. And so the first thing, actually, let's give this a background that's going to be pink, um, just so we can see. That's the SVG itself, which has the default sizes on it, um, which is 300 by 150, maybe, something like that. I don't know why that is, but that's what it is. So let's come in with a width um, just to shrink it down a little bit. And we know we want it to be uh, like a circle. Um, we're going to sort of steal Zed's um, aesthetic that he had going on because I found it look nice. So we can do an aspect ratio. You can just do one or you can do one over one to make it uh, the width and the height the same. So we just have to update, you know, if I update this, it updates both of them. Uh, aspect ratio of one, we can add a bit of padding on here just because if not, it's going to look a little weird. Uh, and then we can add in our border radius and we just do a 50% to make it into a nice circle like that. But we want to improve these colors uh, a little bit. So for the background, it will be a consistent color. Um, and actually, before we do that, let's come to the button itself, which was our accordion trigger, just because I want to make one quick change here before we finish styling that up. Um, so on the trigger itself, let's just give this a background of transparent so we don't actually see it right now and our border uh, border zero. So the border disappears. <laughs> that looks a little bit better. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is here we can add in, uh, I'm going to use HSL 0, 0%, 0%, which will just give us a black. And then I can do a 0.25 like that just to give us, you know, a bit of a background color for the circle that we'll have. And actually we're going to have some, some darker colors on there. So maybe a 7.5 would actually look a bit better. It's hard to see the icons, um, but we're going to change those colors. But there we go. We have those coming through there. I might have forgot the last one down there. We'll update that in a minute. Um, but yeah, we have, we have this coming in, but obviously we want each one of these to actually be different. And how can we do that? Um, and the easy way to do that, I'm going to do fill and because the panels are going to have colors that are used in more than one way, when this is all said and done, I'm going to do a variable here and fill is an SVG property, uh, panel, I'm going to do panel color and just like that. And it's not defined, don't have anything here. So it doesn't actually do anything. So you can see they all stay like that. But let's just say we had a fallback of red, they'll all change over to red. So fill is an SVG property we can style with CSS and change them. So yeah, to be able to use that now, we don't actually want to go to the icon itself. We just want to choose the accordion panel itself. So we can do accordion panel and child, and I can choose the first one. And we can use this panel color. And I'll talk about that underscore in a second, but we can make that one red. You can see that one is switched over to red and really fast here. We can make the second one here, which would be my second one. And we can make that one blue and that one is switched over to blue. And I love this. Uh, I love doing stuff like that. And this idea of the underscore is something I haven't used. The idea has been around a long time. I think it was uh, Leia Veru who coined it, but I could be wrong. I do apologize if it was, uh, if I'm mixing up, um, I'm saying this off the top of my head. So it's possible it was someone else. Um, and it's this idea of like a private member, basically saying like, this isn't a global property. It's something that is just for this accordion. And the only reason to do it is just to sort of do this indication of don't go looking for accordion panel in the root, look for it in the parent of this component, basically. Um, and you know that it's not something that's going to leak out because we have inheritance and everything when it comes to custom properties. So a nice way to keep it sort of contained within. Um, so I'll set these up and I'll be right back with you. So there we go. I've added some nicer colors to each one of these panels um, right there. And I've also fixed the reef. I just had a, a typo um, in my SVG link. And I'm just going to bring these up here uh, and paste them just so they're, you know, we have the accordion panel and then we have all these nth children setting the colors on there. So there we go. That is sort of the beginning of what we want to have set up. Obviously, we have quite a bit of a ways to go, but I think it's coming together already. Now, the problem we have with the panels is they're too big because we have content in here, which is normal. The content is making the panels grow, and that's exactly what we'd expect. But in this case, we sort of want to hide things away a little bit, and that's where things get a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we're going to style up the panels themselves a bit more now. And, you know, how could, how could let's just come here for now and let's say a height of, say, 100 pixels. Uh, and then, you know, that's coming. So, okay, we can add an overflow overflow uh, hidden on them. 
And we sort of get what we want, but how can we decide what height they should be? That, that could be problematic. And actually, well, we want them stacked at smaller screen sizes, but I sort of want to go with what Zed did and get them next to each other at larger screen sizes. So one way we can actually do that is because the parent is a display of flex, it actually works really well because it allows us to use flex basis. Uh, and that means that if my flex direction changes, so we can switch this over to row, the flex basis is always the, the size on the main axis. So this way, the main axis is this way. So we're controlling the width. But when we change this to column, then we're switching the main axis and now it's becoming the height. And in this situation, it's, it's not often I find a really good use case for flex basis over using just a width. But this is one of those times it just works out wonderfully. Uh, and just because I know um, how this is set up, I'm going to, this is like for demo only. So let's just add a little uh, demo only that I'm going to put here. Uh, and you know what, let's just grab that. And I'm just going to, just so it's not like stuck to the top of the screen, I'm going to add in a margin, uh, margin top of like 10 rem. Um, whoops. I don't want that there though. I want that here. Sorry. Uh, just so we can have that set up. So there we go. Um, <laughs> it has room for my face, but also just it always drives me nuts when things are stuck to the top of the browser there. Okay. So we have the flex basis, but how can we decide how big that flex basis should be? Well, ideally, we want to have a little bit of padding on here, right? Um, and we also want to have on the panel itself a bit of padding. And we also have what, like our trigger that's going to be right there. And so for me, the best way to do it is let's add those. Uh, or we already have a height on the button. Um, but on the panel itself, or actually, what, let's, you know what, let's come down uh, to where we had the trigger here just really fast. I am going to add a display of flex on here, which doesn't really change much. But we can do an align items of center just to center it that way. We can add a gap of say one rem, and then I can do a flex direction, which I often don't uh, do either. But I'm going to do a column reverse, and that should have been a row reverse. Uh, just to put the icon on the left and this on the right makes it look a little bit uh, nicer. And then the other thing you'll notice is this small space that's coming right here, and that space is because our accordion trigger here is a button which has some default padding on it. Um, so I'm just going to come here and say padding of zero and it gets rid of that. So we're working a little bit from a better place. Uh, and now we can come up and set up this accordion. Sorry for, for jumping around a little bit. Um, but yeah, over to the panel again now. And so, yeah, the flex basis here, we sort of want to base it on some sort of padding that we're going to be putting on these rather than having it on some arbitrary thing. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to come here and we're going to do uh, we're going to create a few custom properties and I'm going to, they're sort of, you know, custom, they're locally scoped to here. So I'm going to use that underscore on there. Uh, and the first one we're going to do is set up the, uh, button size and I'd use three rem for that. And then the other thing we're going to do is panel padding. Let's go in with like a 0.57 rem. Um, the nice thing with having these here is they're also going to be really easy to customize and to add stuff to and change stuff. Uh, you know, if you want to put in different values here, everything's going to be controlled here, which is always really nice as well, but it's going to let us do some nice stuff. So on here, we can, on the panel itself, we can add that padding. So padding was my bar, uh, panel padding right there. Hit save. We get our padding and well, this won't change anything. It will make it just so it all works together where on the icon itself, the width here, I'm just going to do my bar and we can get the button size on that. Everything stays the same, but it just makes means uh, that we can update things over here. And it also means we have reference to that three rem because that's going to be important now when we set up this flex basis where I'm going to do a calc of my var panel padding plus my var panel or button size. There we go. Hit save. And now it's exactly what I want it to be. It looks very broken at the moment. Don't worry about it yet. We're going to fix it. One of the reasons it is very broken right now is if you remember where we had headings and stuff in here. Um, so if I come and take a look, we have this H2 has that big padding that's on there. Um, right. So we have that and then we have that going on, which we don't really want. And in general, margins are going to get in our way here. If you have a reset that already, you know, you might use a reset that gets rid of margins from the beginning. I'm not going to assume that you do that. So I'm just going to say here, uh, accordion 
and star so anything that's a child or descendant i should say not child but anything that's a descendant of the accordion will get a margin of zero uh, and that will start fixing things for us a little bit the one thing i just realized in doing that is when i did the panel padding plus we have the button size here uh, it's adding the panel padding, but it's not enough. We actually need this to be doubled because we have padding on both sides. So that's easy to do. I'm just going to wrap that in parentheses and do it times two. So the full calc there, just so we can see the whole thing. Uh, so we have a calc and then we have that plus our var button size. So we're multiplying this by two. And now you can see that it's actually starting to work a little bit better. And I do believe we need to wrap that in parentheses just, or we probably don't need to wrap that in parentheses. Actually it does. I'm pretty sure CSS does order of operations. So it would actually do the multiplication before the addition, but just to be safe. Um, and it makes it a little easier to read. I think, um, it is a little bit weird when you have custom properties that are mixed in with these things, but I do think it, you know, we shouldn't be playing around with this once it's set up. Everybody should just be coming up here to make changes and stuff anyway. Now, ideally, we wouldn't actually see this text here. We're going to fix that in a minute. But uh, let's come in with the border radius on here first, actually. And the border radius is a bit of an interesting one on these panels. Uh, just because at these sizes, so I could do a, a border, whoops, sorry. We could do our border radius on them all and just put a really big number. And it makes a nice pill shape. The problem with this is when they become expanded. So let's see how we're going to do our expanded one. And I mentioned we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have, uh, let me just go find it, this area expanded of true right here. So on the panel one, uh, my button has the area expanded of true. And I want to take advantage of that. So I'm going to do this using some modern CSS. So we're going to say that panel, uh, or it's accordion panel, has and then in there we can do an attribute selector of area uh, expanded i was going to do hidden is equal to true and then we could give this a flex uh i'm going to say flex uh, for now let's just do a flex basis of like 500 percent, just so we can see that it's different um or maybe like 2000 uh, percent or something like that um just so we actually have like a height that's coming on here something okay we're stuck there. I'm making it really big, but whatever. That's what we have. Uh, but just to show you, it's getting bigger. Now, this selector obviously um, is using has, which browser support is definitely not perfect for, even though it's not terrible, uh, but it's not perfect. We are going to be using JavaScript along the way here. So if you'd prefer not to use has, you could just have like a class or a data attribute that you're toggling on the panel itself. So we, we just have to put something on the panel here that could get toggled by JavaScript and it would work exactly the same way. I just, I love has, so I'm going to use it uh, along the way with this one. Uh, so if there is an area expanded of true, we're going to expand the whole thing. I think that this is such a great use case for has. Um, so yeah, it gets expanded and gives us this really ugly border radius that works perfectly at these smaller sizes. So how can we figure out a border radius on the panel here that would actually work? And interestingly enough, we can take advantage of the button size to be able to do it because basically, and we also actually not just the button size, we want the panel padding. Um, basically, if your border radius is half the size, half the height of an element, it will give you this perfect shape like this. But ideally, I want to keep that exact same radius here, even when it's expanded. So right now, this radius here is actually the height divided by two. So what we can do is because this is effectively my height, uh, I'm going to take that and put it here, but because I want to take that height and I need half of it to be able to keep that border radius the way it's looking, I'm just going to take that entire calculation that I was doing. Let's stretch this all out. I'm going to wrap all of it. And over here, we can do a divide by two. And now see how it changed a little bit. So let's go take a look. And now the border radius here is actually maintaining around the circle here. And it looks really nice. But on these ones, it stays exactly the same. And it doesn't matter how big or how small it gets, it's always going to work out. Um, so another reason why these custom properties are nice, because again, if we come up to these and I ever change this down to a two, they all update all at the same time. Uh, or if I change my padding, it all updates at the same time. And so it works out really well. Now, if we jump back down to my here where I had this gigantic flex basis on here, um, instead of using a percentage like that, if we come in with fixed units, we can actually get something that looks a little bit better. So I'm going to use a clamp just to make sure it doesn't get too big. But the idea here is um, as this shrinks down, you notice how it's like a little bit responsive. So it's smaller screen sizes. Like it, we just want to make sure like, okay, it looks pretty good here, but as it shrinks down, it will actually shrink a little bit. Um, if we have a smaller space, 
and I think it should work out okay with the text. This would depend a little bit, the sizes that you're putting in the clamp. But basically, I don't want it to be too tall, I don't want it to be too small, but when it's opened, I think that looks okay. Um, and yeah, we, we get that set up nicely. And so now you can see the last thing before we worry about the interactions is the text that I have down here. Um, so what I want to do ideally is hide that, and we're going to sort of do it in two ways. Uh, so if we come and take a look, we have the accordion content here, but the content has the paragraph as well as an image inside of it. So if we come down, I think my image is right there. So we could come right here um, and we could say accordion uh, content and just choose the paragraph itself. I could, of course, just give that a class. That would work as well, but I didn't. So we're just going to do this uh, and I'm going to do a transform and we want to move it down so we can do a translate on the y-axis and I'll just do like two rem. Uh, not negative. I always think negative to go down. <laughs> there we go. So it's a little bit of a cheap way to like move it off. Uh, but we'll also come and say the opacity is zero because when we add the interaction here, it's just going to look a little nicer if it's also fading in. Um, and I guess for now, we'll leave our titles like that. We're, we're going to do a bit of work with that, but I think it'd be really nice to add a little bit of interaction so we can actually see this working. So let's uh, hop into our JavaScript and get started. So what do we need? Well, we need to get our accordion itself. So we'll just say accordion is going to be equal to document.query selector. And I'm gonna choose my accordion. And that's actually the only thing we're gonna have to choose here, but we get the accordion right there. And so on that accordion, I'm gonna add an event listener. So add event listener. Now we could have chosen each of the panels inside, but for that, then each one has an event listener on it. This just makes, we, we'll just do one event listener. It makes it life a little bit easier. Uh, so we're gonna say a click, and when someone clicks, you know, stuff has to happen. Now, the trick for this, if we only want one event listener, is we have to pay attention to where it's being clicked on inside of there. So we are gonna put E here for the event, so we can actually um, track what's going on. And for now, I'm gonna do a console log, just so we can see, because I'm gonna do E target. Um, and what that means is if we come and take a look here and so yeah when when I get in here if I click on something now you can actually see what I'm clicking on so I clicked on the title I clicked on uh, for actually for most of those I'm clicking on the title um, but we're also here's the image if I probably go far enough into the padding or something I'm guessing it's so it knows exactly what I'm clicking on I mean there's the I'm getting the use for my SVG so we can track exactly what we've clicked on. And what's interesting here is you can actually choose something using, I'm gonna use closest. And when we use closest, you can choose what? So I'm gonna say accordion panel. And now if I click on one and I did it wrong because I misspelled closest, <laughs> so let's fix that. And now when I click on it, it, it was looking like, okay, I clicked on the SVG, but it's gonna keep going until it finds the closest panel that I clicked on. So in this case, it was, if we go and take a look, you can see it was panel five. If I click on this one and we go and take a look, we can see that it's now panel one. So it's a nice, using this is the, a really nice, easy way to have one event listener that's taking care of everything. So what we can do now is come in with a variable for that. So I'm gonna say const of active panel is going to be equal to the panel that we've just clicked on. Nice and easy. Now there is one problem with this. Um, and so let's actually, let's do this console log active panel. So this should give us the exact same results we were having before, Act, you know, the panels are coming up. The problem is um, if we click in between them, you can see it's coming up with null because there's nothing because we're tracking for the entire accordion, which means these spaces in between them are actually things that could trigger things. So the way we can uh, avoid that is if we come here, we could say that if we do, uh, we could say if active panel return. And that means if there is no active panel, the function just stops there. So now if I'm clicking on the panels, we're getting something. If I'm clicking in between the panels, the function's just going, nope, that's not an active panel. We're out of here. I'm not going to do anything else. And so that way we know it's only doing things when we actually want it to be doing things. <laughs> All right, so we can get rid of that uh, console log now and we can keep on going. Now we're gonna have a lot of stuff to do here. So I'm gonna create a function and it's gonna be called toggle accordion. And the toggle accordion is going to say panel to activate. So when we click on something, we need to think a little bit about what we wanna happen. So let's go look back at our HTML for a second. Uh, and so when we click, we're getting the accordion panel 
And inside the accordion panel, we have the button that has an area expanded of false that will have to become true. And we have the div here with our accordion content that is currently area hidden true, which will have to get turned to false. That's on the active panel, but all the other panels we need to ensure, like the one that was active, we need to make it non-active, right? So we have the two different things that have to be going on at the same time. So let's do that first by getting all the buttons. So we're going to say const buttons is equal to uh, panel to activate. And then we can say that we're going to get the parent element. And I'll, we'll look at why we're doing that in a second. And then we can do a query selector and we'll look for every button. Uh, we could use the class here if we want the rows at accordion trigger if we want, but we only have that button, so it should be fine. And so now let's just do a console log on there of my buttons. And so if I click on one of them, we should get the all the buttons showing up, um, right? Except <laughs> I just realized we want this to be all. We don't want one button, we want all the buttons. So we're doing a, a query selector all uh, right there. So buttons get all of them. So if we do that, uh, let's go take a look. We can inspect. Uh, and if I click on one of them, console, you can see we're getting the node list with five different buttons in there. So we're getting every single one of them. And why that's useful is because instead of like trying to figure out which one is actually the one that has, you know, which one are we turning off? Which one are we turning on? Uh, to figure out which one we're turning off, we can sort of go a little bit easier and just say uh, buttons dot for each and here we need to say button because for each button that's inside there and we'll use an arrow function because we'll do something and now what we can do is on each one of those buttons we're going to say button we can set attribute and when we set the attribute we want that area expanded and this is where i said we're going to we're going to cheat a little bit we're going to say area expanded is equal to false and why would we want to do that right? That seems a little bit like a strange thing to want to do to set them all to false, but it just means that if we come and look in here, um, let's just move that down a little bit and we'll find the button. So right now this is area expanded true. If I click on this one, that first one becomes false now. They all become false, but that's fine. We're setting the one that was equal to true is becoming false. So uh, a nice easy way just to sort of cover all our bases, shrink all of them down, but just as that's happening, we can also then say that the panel to activate query selector, and we can choose the button that is inside of there. And on that one, we can set the attribute of area expanded and make that one true. So I'll just bring this out and make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. So it's basically exactly what we just did here where we were setting it to false. The current button of the panel we've clicked on after this, and this is important, this comes after that or nothing would happen, uh, but we're saying the button for the one that is currently being clicked on, we're going to set that one to true. And that true, because of my has selector, is setting the size on all of these. So now, whichever one I click on is getting the area expanded of true, and that's what's making it grow and fill the space that we want it to. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then we can use that same trick for the content inside. So if we go and get the content for each one of those, const, uh, and this time we say content is contents <laughs> is equal to panel to activate, parent element, query selector all, and in this case we want a, a dot accordion content, uh, right? Because we want to make sure that we're getting all of the different ones. And so for that, we can sort of copy what we did here and paste it. But switch that over to contents and then for each one of the individual content pieces or divs that are inside of there the content set attribute and in this case if you remember we had area hidden of true we want to set it to or actually we want to set them all to true so area hidden on all of them will get set to true so that makes sure whichever the old one that was activated is now becoming deactivated and then we can take the same type of thing that we just did here, but do this for my dot accordion content, set attribute of uh, area hidden, and set that one over to false and hit save. Uh, and prettier here just broke that over multiple lines, but it's exactly what we just had. 
Uh, so let's just do that for this one too to make it a little bit more consistent and I guess easier to read at smaller sizes. So basically this is making all of the panels inactive and then we're going back and reactivating the one that we want after that. So that should work perfectly fine. And if we come and take a look again, we see that that's actually working. And if we inspect on that, we can go and take a look. There is the area hidden is true and we're currently on this one. So if I click the area hidden has now gone over to false. If I click back, it goes back to true. If I go back on the second panel, it goes back over to false. So that's working and we can also, uh, that's on the content itself. And if we were to look inside here at the button, we get the area expanded is true. If I click there, area expanded is false and then back to true. So everything on that side is working perfectly. And that's all the JavaScript we actually need for this to work uh, is set up right there. So now we just want to style things to look a little bit nicer, which is pretty, we have a, sort of could go a long way, but let's just add the animation in to start with. Cause right now this is kind of ugly that it's looking like that. So to be able to do that right now, I mentioned we were going to use flex grow and we're going to look at where flex grow is going to come into this whole thing. Right now we are using flex basis. So here's the where we're using the flex basis and that's the big size here. And then the rest of the time, the flex basis, we haven't actually, or we had set this one. So it's smaller. And luckily flex basis is actually something that we can transition. So we can say transition flex basis. And for now, let's just say 500 milliseconds, just so we can actually see it in action. You got to spell transition properly. Transition. There we go. Look at that. Nice and pretty. It looks pretty good, right? Uh, and then, of course, when that happens, we also need the content to become visible. So let's fix that up as well while we're here. So we can just take that, actually, and I'm going to copy it here. And then we can just say that the accordion content P, so it, it's a bit of a long selector. Uh, if you don't like that, you could, of course, put something else here. Uh, but the paragraph that's inside accordion content that's inside of here, you could probably get away with actually just doing this because I think it's our only paragraph that's in there. So it depends a little bit on the structure. Uh, I'm going to do this just to be on the safer side. Do we need to do that? Maybe not. Maybe we can just get away with doing it like that. And again, this could have a class on it. Uh, and then basically we can just say, take those two, put them here, put this down to zero. We don't need a unit. So let's get rid of that. And the opacity goes up to one. And of course we can transition those transition uh, transform 500 milliseconds and my opacity at 500 milliseconds. And now we're, we're, we will run into a bit of an issue because it's gonna be hard to read the text. And that's something we're going to want to make sure that we can do, but you can see it, it looks a little bit nicer when it sort of like fades, um, you know, especially as the panels moving up, it sort of comes up with it. Uh, but even if the panel's not one that's moving, you know, we sort of get this little transition as things go back and forth a little bit that I think makes it look a little bit nicer. Uh, one thing that would be even better though, would be if the text here was actually lined up with the title. So we can come down to here and the only thing we have a different ideas on how we could select that because right now I have an ID on my heading. Uh, we could style the button itself because you know, we have the accordion trigger, uh, and the, but the text here is inside of that as well. So, uh, there's different ways we could sort of approach styling that one. I'm going to use this, but if you'd rather, you know, we could, or you know what, maybe we'll do this class is equal to uh, accordion title, accordion title like that. Um, just cause this is maybe the trigger. You don't really realize when you're looking at this, that the button is, is bigger than what we're looking at here. Um, and we have this too. So we can see our button. We'll, we'll fix that. We have some additional styling on the way. Uh, but let's come in and start that here. We can do accordion, accordion title, and let's just say font size is 1.75 rem. So it gets bigger. I, there we go. Um, and I've already set it up on all of them. So we can see that's coming in and we probably want a font weight. We'll say 700 on those as well. There we go. Looks a little bit better, maybe a little bit big. So we can drop that down just a, a little bit and there. Um, it is a little bit hard to read and it's going to change a little bit, um, at the different sizes, but for now, let's just get this lined up with what we have there. And this is a little bit tricky actually to do in a sense. Um, but to be able to do it, if we come and take a look at the button itself, which was our trigger. Um, so let's find a trigger on here. I was using a display flex with this gap of one rem. And what I'm actually going to do is change this over to another one. So we're going to say, um, 
gap uh, accordion yeah, we'll just say uh, panel gap panel gap and then we can come all the way back up where we had this and we're going to set the same thing panel gap of one rem and the reason i want to do that is to be able to get this to line up properly we need to add a margin or the easiest thing in my opinion is to add a margin to the left side of that so that's my accordion content uh, and specifically the p here so we're going to add a margin on here margin left and this is a little bit of the tricky part and what we need is the size of the button plus that gap that's right there well we have both of those uh, so we can come here uh, and use that button size that's right there except this should be in a var of button size plus my var of button or panel panel gap and there we go it lines it up perfectly because we're putting those two sizes together now it's also really hard to read this um, and there's a few other things that we'll need to fix the other thing that i don't like is the space on this side it would be nicer so we could add a margin to the right side or we could just come to our panel itself when we set all of this up and we set up the padding uh, we could do this as a you know just continue the shorthand but just to make it really explicit I'm just going to take this and do a calc here as well and do like times four or times five just to add, you know, we're increasing the padding that's on this side by a lot more. So if ever you increased or decreased your overall padding, it just sort of helps keep the balance a little bit on both sides um, by having those. And again, you don't have to sort of use the long hand here. You could do that as a shorthand and just continue it. It's up to you. Uh, but they both work so there we go that's set up so one way we can actually make it a lot easier to read um, especially this text is let's come and find my image next uh, which we'd already played with here and what i'm going to do is we're going to take another advantage of our accordion panel has da da da, da, da. we're going to take that one and we're going to say that the accordion accordion i can't spell accordion you'd think by now i'd be getting better at it we've written it so much uh, we're going to add a filter to it and filters are fun, especially for images, because then I can just take my brightness and do it at like 0.5. So it darkens it. So anytime we're on one, we have a dark image. Now it doesn't look very good when it just like switches over on us like that. So the other thing that I'm also going to do on this one uh, is let's come on the accordion image with the brightness a filter. We can transition that as well. So transition filter 500 milliseconds just to stay consistent. Um, and then as it comes in, there we go. It makes it a lot easier to ensure that our text is readable. And the other thing I'm going to do, since we're adding that darkness that comes in and this is coming and everything's sort of all happening at once, I think what we could do here is actually come to when we did the content itself. We have the transition of the transform and the opacity. We could add in a small delay here of like 250 milliseconds on both of them. So now it just means like it'd go dark and then it sort of comes in a little bit after. I just think it looks a little bit nicer and I sort of like that. So it's starting to come together. I'm going to do two more things and then I think we can get on to the responsiveness of it before we can get into like fixing up some of the, the color things and a few other little small uh, details around the way. And that is one of them is with the overall animations that are happening. The little ones like this moving in, I don't think are too big of a deal, but this is a lot of movement. So what we could actually do for that is um, this transition right here on the accordion panel. I'm actually going to remove it from there and I'm just going to come down and put it here and then at media refers reduced re refers reduced motion, no preference preference and on the accordion panel. We're going to put that in so right now it's going to look exactly the same way that it did but if ever somebody's comes onto a, the page and they actually have set things up so they prefer reduced motion on their system so if i come here and i do prefers uh reduced motion you can emulate it so i did a control shift p or command yeah control shift p mac would probably be command shift p in the dev tools and then i can type that in and that just means that it will jump and go like that. Remember it is prefers reduced motion and not no motion. So for me, that fading in, I don't think would be something that would be problematic. 
uh, especially the the background transitioning wouldn't be um, potentially you might want to put this little and the moving up maybe the opacity changes uh, could be something that gets put in that as well so yeah if we come down and find that other one where we had that transition which was this on the paragraph we could come and move that from here the transition could just get put inside of course you need the selector as well uh, since I'm not using SAS and I can't nest media queries so there we go uh, so now it just comes in like that the little change on the background I think is completely fine and like that we've made things a little bit easier on people or improved the experience um, so let's do prefers reduced motion do not emulate and we go back to what we had originally where we have a little bit of motion going on just like that cool so with that done <laughs> What do we need to do? Uh, I want to make the titles, as I said, a little bit more obvious because we really lose it if it's on a white background or if you had different colors, potentially on different colored backgrounds. So we'll do that. We'll make it responsive and then we'll fix our focus states and keyboard navigation a little bit. The keyboard navigation definitely uh, does work right now. So that's a good thing because we built it properly with buttons from the beginning. Uh, so it, it works the way it's intended to, but just the styling of things is not fantastic. Now, I am going to be turning these sideways, and we're actually going to lose the title visually, which isn't ideal, uh, but we're going to do that. So I, I, actually, just before we get to doing that, if you want to just keep it as an accordion that's like this, it's probably has a little bit more information in it, so it's probably a better way to work. So if that's the case, uh, the part I'm doing now, I'm going to put in a media query. You just wouldn't put this in a media query. You could include all the styling here, but I'm going to do an at media. We're going to do a max width which isn't too often, but I just don't want to have to rewrite. Like I don't have to remove these styles at larger screen sizes. So mobile first isn't always, it should be path of least resistance, right? So this is a path of least resistance where I won't have to reset styles um, down. Now I'm going to be using uh, 45M for my media query. So for this, for a min width, so that means for a max width, I need to do this one. And I'm very much looking forward to range syntax getting better support so we don't have to worry about these stupid things where there's that one pixel crossover <laughs> um, but yeah we're going to do a max width like that and have an accordion title and for this we're going to use a pseudo element actually to bring in the background on it because it's going to look a little nicer so let's on there do a after and actually because that's going to be a pseudo element we're going to come here and do a position of relative right there because this is going to get the position of absolute position absolute like that but i want to make sure that the height is actually the same height as what we have here so i'm going to do a, a height of var and that was our button size so it's going to have the right height on it for now let's give it a background background of pink so we're actually be able to see it uh, and then the question is what's the width so let's just say 100 percent for now and it's not showing up because we're too big on our screen size. <laughs> Let's shrink that down. There we go. It's appearing. So uh, there it is. So, okay, first let's come, I guess, and we can give that a left of zero and a top of zero for now. This might get changed, but uh, we're getting it there. And the height is okay. It actually needs to move up a little bit. We'll get around to that in a second. Uh, but how big do I want to make it? I don't actually want it to be 100%. I need it to be bigger because I want it to go behind this and I want it to stick out on that side a little bit. So for that, I'm actually going to do a var. Um, so we're going to have to give it something actually. But before we worry about that, let's come here and just get this behind. So Z index of negative one, we lose it. So we can come back onto the parent and isolation isolate like we looked at before just to prevent it from going behind anything else. It sort of stuck this is a new stacking context we could use a, a z index on there as well but there we go that is set up properly um, but we want to fix the sizing of it and the positioning of it a little bit and to get this actually centered properly i'm going to take off this top 100 and this is our zero i should say uh, and the reason i'm taking that top off is when we use position absolute we can actually use it with grid so i'm going to turn the parent here into a grid container uh, and when I do that, nothing will change, but then we can do an align items of center and it will center that within the space. If we had the top zero on still, that top is locked in at zero. Uh, but without the top zero there, it's centering it within the parent <laughs> um, and it works perfectly. 
So it's centered at the right height. Now I just want to worry about the width of it. So for that width, the 100% is too small, but we definitely want it to be 100%. And then we could say plus var, and then we can on there say my button size. And that's not really going to be enough because we're in, I'm just going to double this basically. <laughs> so let's select all of that, wrap it and say uh, times two. So it becomes much bigger. And then that's my left here can actually become my uh, var panel gap. Uh, probably won't be enough, but let's try that and times. Uh, we'll do a calc on this calc, take the whole thing times negative one and see it's not quite enough so then we also want to like ideally it's actually going to stop like right around the middle of this uh to get the right size or actually we could pull it the whole size back so panel gap plus var uh button size oh the times negative here <laughs> the, i was like why is that not working it's because we're doing this times negative one and then adding that um so we want to take all of that together and then multiply it by negative one. That's the order of operations kicking in. There we go. So it's lining up perfectly with the button over there. Uh, and then we could add in the border radius of 100 BW. It doesn't matter. It makes it a pill shape. And we just need to bring that uh, icon up ahead. So we had the icon. We could just on here do a Z index of a big number. You'll notice I don't have a positioning on this, but because this is now a grid item, because I added the grid to the um, title thingy, the Z index will work on there. Or actually, no, it's not because of the grid. Um, it's because it's a flex item because Z index works on flex items as well. Because the, the parent for though I was thinking grid, but it's just the title that's the grid there. Um, so there we go. That is coming through and we get that. So now, of course, what do we need to change is the color here. And for that, we can just do something, you know, come in with a, a dark colors. We had something like that that we were using before, maybe a bit darker, 80. Um, that's way too dark. It's working. It's way too dark, though. Maybe, oh, maybe the five is okay. Oh, that does look better, actually. Um, and it just makes it so we can actually see them. And then we can get them to come up. Everything's lining up the way we'd probably want it to line up. And I think looks pretty good overall. I'm, I'm really happy with how that looks at this stage. Uh, so let's make it responsive, like I said, and then we can in improve on the, the keyboard navigation of the entire thing. So to make it responsive, we can make the screen a little bit bigger again. And the main thing, there won't be too much work to do, I don't think. But the main thing we want to do is let's go find my accordion itself we had this set up. So right after that, we'll do an at media min width. And I said 45 M and we're going to do a flex direction of Don dot accordion and flex direction. will get switched to my row now. So then they go that way and already it's sort of working though. Things look a bit weird and we can see the text is really getting muckered up because <laughs> the sizes of everything are, are shrinking and growing. And I find it's the sizing looks a little bit off right now. Um, so there's definitely improvements that can be made along the way here to what it's looking like, but it's, it's not a bad start and it's actually working. Um, so let's look at how we can improve this a little bit more. And one thing is right now they have like, the, the size of the height is actually shifting a little bit. Notice how like if I go in this panel because there's less text, it shifts a bit. And when I go in that one, it actually increases. So the, like the amount of text that's in each panel can technically cause things to shift. There we go. Um, so on this, on the accordion itself, I'm also going to come in and give this a, an actual fixed height, which is not something I do very often. But on something like this, I do think it actually makes sense like, I don't mind. I, uh, this is the type of component where you might have a fixed height on something. So there we go. That's, I think, working pretty good. The other thing, it's hard to see, but the whole width of all of these actually changes a little bit depending on the text as well. Um, and that's because we're using display flex. And so this is in a container. Actually, let's go grab my, that container. All the, a wrapper, I should say. Let's put an outline on this. Outline of two pixels, solid red, just so we see it. Notice we have this extra space left over, and that's because these are growing using that flex basis that I set up for when we were the other way. And the flex basis worked super, super, super well. Um, it was perfect, basically, right? It did everything we needed it to do. 
And I want to keep the flex basis working. Uh, but the other thing that we want to do here is, and we're going to try something. I was going to put this in a media query originally, but let's also just add on here flex grow of one. And notice now it's actually taking up all the available space. And that means now it actually can go and it, it's allowed to grow. And because it's allowed to grow, it can take up more space. I'm going to take that flex grow off for a second, just so you can actually see something that's interesting is when these are moving, notice like the icon is moving perfectly along with the growing, the shrinking on all these sides. If I turn that flex grow one on here, when that happens, there's sometimes like a bit of a, a snap jump at one point before things, it, it, it just looks a lot less smooth for some reason. Uh, and that's because this is transitioning, but the flex grow is not transitioning. Um, but now at least it's filling up all the space. And let's just shrink that down again. So we're at this side and over here, everything is looking really good. There's no issues. So the flex grow isn't breaking anything here because we don't have a fixed height, but we could add a fixed height too um, if we wanted to. But at these bigger sizes, it's a little bit off. So we don't actually need a media query to get this to work, which is kind of fun. Um, because I was going to have some extra stuff in there. But what we do want to do is where we have the transition uh, with the flex basis of 500 milliseconds here, I'm going to also do a flex row and also put that 500 milliseconds with it. So when we do that now, it's a little bit snappier and notice like the icons and the titles don't, it doesn't look like anything like jumps. It doesn't look like anything's off. It just sort of works. The big issue obviously is the text that's sort of crumpling away and coming back out. Uh, we could do things that could fix that a little bit um, for both directions. But for me, what I'm going to do <laughs> is uh, know we were playing with the opacity. So when we open it, it's a little bit less noticeable. So let's come up uh, and find that opacity when we were saying here the opacity and we had that transform. They were taking 500 milliseconds, but we had this delay here. But I actually want this delay. We're only going to have it show up afterwards. And we'll play with this a bit more in a second. But by doing that, it only comes in when like the animation's finished and then the text comes in. So we don't have to worry about it crumpling or uncrumpling or anything like that. Uh, right. So it's, it's causing, it's doing its own thing along the way. And then it just comes in. But of course on the way out, it's crumpling away, which we don't actually want. And what we're actually going to do is instead of having this here, we're actually going to add this part here. Um, instead of just on accordion content. And we're going to take off that. So we have the same selector we had here. And the reason for that now is we're going to transition it only in one direction. When we click to another one, it just disappears the text uh, and it hides it. So it's only transitioning when we're opening a panel and we're not transitioning when we're closing it. And that's fine because no one's really looking at the panel that's closing. They're focused, they click here, their eyes are there and they're paying attention to that. So we'll worry about the transition there. And when we click off, we're not too concerned about it. And again, it's within our prefers reduced motion. So we add it in. There we go. Anyway, I think you get it uh, before I start rambling again. Uh, so that's looking all right. Now let's turn off that red border. That's kind of ugly. So we can get rid of that. Now let's fix our keyboard interactions because everything's, I mean, the keyboard interactions are working. Everything's fine. Uh, and it should work regardless of the screen direction. We can see it's working like that. Uh, but it looks kind of ugly <laughs> the way the buttons are getting selected. So there's a few different choices we could make uh, for how we're going to do this. But for me, I want to take, well, I think the best thing to do along for whatever we're going to do is to take advantage of these colors that we've created to begin with, uh, to use them in, in another way. But where you have some choices is how things are going to get set up. Uh, and then actually there's a performance improvement we can do on these as well, because things are shifting here. We want to make sure that those shifts don't impact anything else. Uh, so we'll come back to that in a second. But for now, let's just say that we're going to, um, that has the area expanded. So I'm going to come here because we're still on the accordion panel. And I'm going to say accordion uh, trigger first, actually. Accordion trigger. And on here, we're going to do an outline of zero, which you never, ever, ever want to do. This is the one situation where I'm going to say we're going to use it because now if I'm keyboard navigating, I don't have anything showing me that there's anything happening. The reason that I'm doing that and I'm sort of grouping it over here and, you know, this could go with our other accordion trigger um, class. But here I'm going to say accordion panel focus focus within. And on there, we're going to bring the outline. 
So we're going to say outline and we'll do like a three pixel solid and we can use our uh, panel color to be able to do it. So if I hit save now and now I keyboard navigate, look, it highlights the entire panel using the color of it, which is kind of fun. Uh, and then on top of that, and it sort of makes sense because the entire thing is clickable anyway. So I think it's a fun way to do it. Uh, and just to make it a bit more, we'll do an outline offset of like three pixels as well. So now look at that. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe we'll make that four or something just to be a, there. I think it looks a bit more balanced and it's looking pretty good. And now if we select it with our keyboard, it stays highlighted. Uh, this is the one place where maybe you want to make a change to how it works, because if I go now to my keyboard navigation, there's nothing highlighting it. But if we're keyboard navigating only, then it's being highlighted. So it depends on how you want to work. If you were to try this with a screen reader, I've tested it on Windows. Uh, it works really well because of everything we've have it, how we have it set up. Um, but yeah, there's just this thing where we lose focus as soon as you touch with the keyboard, except if you click on the icon. Uh, or if we were in the mobile view, if you click on the empty areas, it's fine. But if you click on that, it brings it in. So if you don't like that, that it could be a little bit different depending on where somebody clicks, which granted is a little bit weird. Uh, we could have that as focus within. Um, so you could use like JavaScript to add focus, even if they click on the panel itself, or there's different sort of approaches you could do to find uh, a fix, depending on if you feel like it needs it or not. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. But we did say there's a performance improvement that we could make. And what that is, um, right now things are moving when I'm clicking. And if I switch the screen to this way, and now I'm clicking, things are moving. But everything, because there will always be one panel that's open, which is kind of important for how this is working, is always one panel and one panel only. And we're starting with an area expanded is true on one of them. So one of the panels is always expanded. And so that means the rest of the page, like this is sort of this self isolated little unit with all of this coming down like together. So because it's very self isolated, what we can do is come over to here. And what I can do here is put in a contain and content. And this pretty much means that the content here is self isolated. This is a shorthand that can, the con it's a shorthand value, which is the equivalent of the layout. Uh, the paint and the style. So it's basically saying all of those things, the layout that's in here, everything else is isolated. And it, the, the elements inside have no influence for the layout, the styles or anything for stuff that's outside of this element. And it, it just helps with the performance a bit because as things are moving around, the page knows it doesn't need to recalculate layout stuff for things that are outside of this element. Everything is locked in. If we were doing it as a more traditional accordion where you could have multiple expand and the element grows in size or shrinks in size, uh, I think there could potentially be issues. Though this doesn't con contain content, doesn't include size because you can also contain size on elements. Um, so it might not actually be an issue either way, but it's basically saying you know, we're, we're just helping performance a little bit by saying this is a little self isolated thing where the content inside of here shouldn't be influencing anything outside of it. And now one thing I did do in this video is using the area expanded is equal to true, which is sort of an idea of semantic CSS, where we're using some of the semantics that we're building in through area attributes for interactions and all of that and using it within our CSS like this. If that's something you'd like to know more of and sort of explore more of, I have a video where I talked about that and you can see it right here. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome who are Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other supporters over on Patreon. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.